playing the Lakers is like going on spring break. You're going to see a bunch of wild and crazy stuff, and eventually you're going to get screwed. <laughs> I hate to be that guy. You, if, if you watch my videos consistently here on the channel, which is greatly appreciated, you know I don't like to point to the refereeing, but some games it just be like that, right? And I don't have a problem with them shooting a lot more free throws, playing style, size. All, there's various reasons for that, but it's the calls down the stretch that are so telling. And that inadvertent whistle on the clay three leading to a jump ball, it shows the hands of the referee. It shows their intentions. Along with various other calls, the AD box, I mean, we can go into it, but hey, that like we've come to expect this. Are, are you surprised, right? And so, <laughs> I mean, it, it just sucks in such a, a legendary performance from those two guys that that's what I have to lead with, but that's what I have to lead with. Now, AD goes down and looks like he had been torn from the Ruta to the Tuta. Like, I don't, I don't know what happened, right? I guess it was hip spasms, but it looked dreadful. And I, I'm not going to lie, I felt, I felt bad for him. I feel bad for him. As much as jokes as we make about his durability, he almost in a way seems cursed, right? And... When he, if he didn't return, it felt like we were just going to pull away in that game. But when he came back, his presence, you know, deters you getting to the rim and into the paint and to the foul line. And you saw a little bit of that with Kaminga, I think, where Kaminga played fine, right? But he wasn't as aggressive as he usually is getting to the basket because of the Lakers size. And at times it forced us into shooting more threes than we needed to, right? In particular, Draymond. Draymond was 0 for 4. And unfortunately, the backpack was back. And listen, he's out of shape. He hasn't played a ton of games. It's not to be unexpected that he doesn't have a rhythm. To me, what I see is, you know, it starts in his feet. Is he going to step into it or hop into it? But when his release slows down like that, it comes out flat. I think he's got to have a quicker release, which in turn helps him get a better arc on the ball. But He's got to keep shooting it. You know, I don't want him to be discouraged because of that 0-4 night, but he probably took more than he wanted to because of the presence of AD and the Lakers' size. The other thing about Draymond, which he was back in the starting lineup, and we'll get to that in a second, was, hey, man, he comes in out of shape. It, it's frustrating. You noticed how inaccurate his bounce passes have been? He's been skipping them at people's feet, and we had 17 turnovers, but the Lakers had 20. Let me not bury the lead as far as the lineups go. We're done with the Dooney lineup. The, the starters were Kaminga and Draymond, not Dario and Looney. And <laughs> Kerr went to Dario and Looney the final three minutes of the first quarter, and it was a 15-2 to two run by the Lakers. So that's that. That's that, Steve. And it felt almost like we had to bully Steve into it, didn't it? It felt like Dub Nation, Twitter, you know, us YouTube heads were all like, what is this? And he's like, all right, all right, fine. And he tried to sneak him in there. He was like, let's see. Let's no, 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 no. So that's the end of that. That might be the biggest positive from the night, right? And then in that fourth quarter, it was Trace Jackson Davis instead of Kavon Looney, who only played five minutes. And listen, Loon has been the, the soldier of soldiers when it comes to you know, getting his rotation messed with and all this and that. I did notice he was the only guy kind of sitting down on the bench in those overtimes. So I'm sure he wasn't happy that he didn't get a second half or late minutes. But hey, that again, that's what we may take away from this. We'll remember, you know, some of these calls and the, and the, the epic battle between Steph and LeBron. We don't know how many more of those we'll get, but this may be a turning point in the rotation of Trace over Looney because he was barbecue chicken in the five minutes he played in the first half. And finally, Steve did something about it. So a few months ago, I was getting my daughter a birthday present, Aces at Mercury, WNBA game. She's a basketball player. So I hop on the app that I was using and it says Aces at Mercury right away, right? You know, location based. I get in there, I buy the tickets, I get hit with the fee that a lot of these apps do. And then it turns out, no, 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 it was listed wrong. It was actually Mercury at Aces. And it wasn't here in Phoenix. It was in Las Vegas. But the app I was using, there's no refunds. I was stuck with the tickets. That's when I made the move to the Game Time app because you shouldn't have to worry about buying tickets to the next big event you want to go to. And it has an all-in price to show you your totals up front. You don't get hit with surprise fees. And I, I like the best part about it is the last-minute tickets, the flash zone deal. My cousin and I, we scored big on some UFC tickets. We were 
floor side, or is that what you say? Floor side? Ring side, I guess is what you would say, right? We got ring side tickets at like one fourth the price because of those last minute deals. And, you know, it's just, in fact, this, this weekend, I, you know, I'm out here in Arizona. It's a college town. So you can get tickets here, GCU, $2 tickets, ASU, $2 tickets. And that's not even the last minute deals, but they, they give you just all sorts of deals. Again, peace of mind. It's simple. They show you the view from your seat. That's another big deal is because you can see the mapping and you're like, oh, that seems like it's good. But no, the actual view is going to let you know the angles you get. I love that about the game time app. So whether it's a concert, a sporting event, a comedy show, take the guesswork out of buying your next tickets and use the game time app. So download the game time app, create an account and use the code alchemy to get $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply, but again, create the account and use the code A-L-C-H-E-M-Y to get $20 off. It's the Game Time app. Last minute deals, lowest prices guaranteed. Now, I do think there were positives, and we've had so many of these one point and clutch losses this year where a lot of them felt like we blew it. Last night, to me, it did feel like the Lakers won it. And as much as it pains me to say this, I know some of y'all going to hit the dislike right now, but if you know, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to spit the facts. As good as Steph played last night, LeBron probably played even better. What, 30, 36, 20, and like 18, it was insane. The, the shooting, the clutch free throws and all that. It's not to take away from Steph's performance, but it just felt like he kind of got out dueled. And yes, he had a helping hand. So you, you have to put that caveat next to it, right? But again, it, it feels like things are coming together and we're playing a little better, but ultimately what, what does matter what it feels, we need to sh it to show up in the win column, right? And Andrew Wiggins, I had brought it up. What was the first game back? It was that Hawks game, right? That heavy game with um, Decky's memorial essentially. And I was like, Hey man, Wiggins kind of seems like he may have flipped a switch mentally and, and maybe his perspective has changed. And sure enough, all this week it's been building to last night where what do you have, like 22 points, three threes, um, starting to, you got a chase down block, right? He's just starting to look like the Andrew Wiggins that we came to love, you know, a, a year and a half ago. So that's a positive. He and Kaminga, what do you know? They're starting to figure it out. They're starting to play a little bit. Hey, they started together, right? I thought Pajemski was great in, in playing in a big spot, his energy, and he's figuring out um, I think that he has to look to finish when he gets downhill. He can't bail out of those downhill attacks every time. I know a lot of people didn't like that pull up three and double overtime once Clay had fouled out. Clay would have taken the shot. And to be honest with you, if Pajemski is going to be who we want him to be, he has to take that shot. That was the shot to take. I did, I did. I had no problem with it until I looked on Twitter after and everybody was complaining about it. I didn't think twice about it. I thought it was going to be the dagger. I thought it was the shot to take. So I, I don't blame Pajemski for that at all. Now, I think you could have made the argument at some point in those minutes and overtimes, you could have went back to Trace and played bigger because they only have one guard on the floor in D'Lo, right? And it's not like he's lightning quick. You could have done that, but it probably wasn't fair to ask Trace to play more minutes since he hasn't been getting minutes, right? But you saw his impact in that fourth, dug down on a pick and roll, protected the rim, altered LeBron, ran, and he got a three-second call. But part of that is he hasn't played. And so, hey, maybe it's a step moving forward that, again, as much as Looney has meant to this organization, you get it. You get the cachet he has and why he's had such a long leash this season. But at the end of the day, it sends the wrong message to everyone if he continues to play over Trace and, and we keep taking these L's. And so maybe that is, is a, a step in the right direction. The other positive, I think, was the ball movement and pace you saw, particularly in the second half. And again, Kaminga and Wiggins getting comfortable playing together, Draymond being the catalyst, Pajemski pushing the pace, but the ball was hopping around and everybody was touching it. That was encouraging. Steph, it never felt like he was forcing them too much, but he had to take 36 shots to get those 46 points. What I did like was how decisive he was getting downhill. Now, he didn't get the whistle. We know that. You, know, you don't have to say that, but he was turning the corner, and what he was doing was, if you notice, he was early picking up. He was picking up like uh, well before the restricted, 
and then extending and jumping long, not up, not floating up in the air and trying to like draw contact. He was making sure he had the angle so they couldn't contest. And then it's stretching to the rim a lot like Tony Parker used to do. And so I think that that's something for Steph to build on because his his finishing has been off. The three ball was the three ball. He hit nine of them, right? And and Clay, to his credit, was making the extra pass. And so it does feel like things are coming together a little bit better. But again, we're, we're in such a deep hole standings wise there are no moral victories at this point in the season they get two days off i don't know with uh the moody cp gp2 those injuries when they're going to come back and my concern is it just it just confuses the rotation again it feels like kerr's been kind of bullied into playing more kaminga wiggins and draymond in, in a more athletic versatile lineup but i'm not holding my breath that that will stay the course once cp's available once GP2 and Moody are available, wait, well, Moody ain't gonna play. We know that, right? But no, I kid. Um, so yeah, man, th there was some encouraging things, super frustrating. And it's it's just been a taxing season. I can't imagine how they feel because I'm exhausted with these clutch finishes, these long extended games, and then you have nothing to show for it. Niners play in a few hours. I don't talk a ton of Niners on this channel. Um, I have been doing their breakdowns sporadically on my patron. You can get last week's. I will cover this game all the way up to hopefully into the Super Bowl. Um, it's similar to my basketball breakdowns. It's like 15 minutes or so, play by play. I, I don't I don't claim to have the knowledge that I have with basketball, with football. I didn't play it, but I've been watching football as long as I've been watching basketball. I, I, I coached a little flag. No, but, you know, I have some fun with it. Um, and I'll give you my picks. I like the Niners. I like the Niners. I believe in Brock Purdy. And if you go back to the beginning of the season, remember, I was like, hey, man, I see a little Drew Brees in this guy. And people were spit out their drink when they heard that. Now it doesn't sound that crazy. Um, but I like him in this spot. Obviously, the weather is an issue. It's undeniable. And listen, Brock Purdy, he may wind up spending the majority of his career playing for a dome team. We know how fickle Kyle is with his quarterbacks, and you know it's it's not a guarantee of anything. But in this spot against Goff, I like him to bounce back. Goff, obviously, it's a different team, and he has gotten better as a player. He's still a standstill target for the pass rush, right? He, he's he's immobile. I think they're going to be able to get home and, and fluster him once he gets hit a couple times. He's a different quarterback, and so I'm not saying it's going to be easy. But I expect to win from the Niners today. I think the problem is I expect to see Lamar in that Super Bowl. And Lamar is a guy who you can't really adjust, make adjustments for. Like, right? He's a, the, a game breaker in the literal sense. It's like, okay, well, you learn from that Christmas Day game. You, how do you adjust to Lamar? That's the problem. You can't. Now, as I speak, Kansas City is up, but I still like Baltimore to come out of that. But I'd prefer to see Mahomes. As crazy as that sounds, styles make fights. I'd rather see, both of them are actually a rematch, right? Now that I think about it, yeah. But I'd, I'd rather see the Kansas City rematch because I do think the Niners match up better to them. As always, hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'm out, y'all.